home invasion. Well, everybody, I'm Jesse Waters along with Judge Janine Pirro, Geraldo Rivera, Dagan McDowell, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. Joe Biden looking to crush the trucker protest in Canada before it spreads here. The president telling Justin Trudeau to get tough and crack down on the freedom convoy. And White House officials are urging Canadian leaders to use their federal powers to break up the protests. It looks like they got the message. Ontario declaring a state of emergency and is demanding the truckers go home now. And Justin Trudeau issuing this direct threat. We talked about the U.S.-based flooding of the 911 phone lines in Ottawa, the presence of U.S. citizens in the blockades, and the impact of foreign money to fund this illegal activity. Everything is on the table because this unlawful activity has to end, and it will end. Mm. Meanwhile, the media keeps hammering the truckers as dangerous insurrectionists. Some of the organizers of this protest, which, as I mentioned, started more than a week ago, they do want to overthrow the government. The police chief says COVID protests are a, quote, nationwide insurrection driven by madness. A nationwide insurrection driven by madness. It's not just truckers. There's a lot of I, I've, I've heard there's QAnon supporters in the crowd. Residents that I have spoken to who say they feel terrorized, oh, intimidated. Look at them. Dancing. And while the media bashes them, a reporter from Barry Weiss's Substack actually went and spoke to him. Turns out it's a pretty diverse group. Quote, I've spoken to close to 100 protesters, truckers and other folks, and none of them sounded like an insurrectionist, white supremacist, racist or misogynist. Greg, I think I know what we need to do. We have to liberate the truckers from Canada. I say we do a full-blown invasion into Canada, make Canada part of the United States. I think everybody would agree that's the right move. You know what? I like the sound of that, and I like the look of that map. You know, uh, when Justin Trudeau said everything's on the table, didn't he just suggest a willingness to go to war because they're saying that Americans are involved. So did he just basically say, let's go, America? Uh, I find that very hard. Look, we saw this coming. When this first started, we, it, that it was going to be called an insurrection on 16 wheels. This is the same demonization that the media did with Trump voters, with uh, parents at school board meetings. Everybody becomes a Nazi because they can't argue with them. The first thing they do is they try the, the blanket smear. I mean, do you really think these are the type of people that are going to mess with the Super Bowl? These are the people who watch the Super Bowl. And it's disgusting that our White House is putting them on par with terrorists. I can't even name a Canadian terrorist. I can name a lot of terrorists from other countries, uh, but I can't do it. But they didn't even do that with Antifa or Antifa. You know, two dozen people died in the George Floyd riots. They didn't get their panties in a bunch over that. But now they're doing it about... Uh, no, basically, nobody has... Nobody has broken a law except honking. And then you got to see a bona fide CNN analyst threatening actual violence, basically trying to initiate violence by saying, slash their tires, drain their gas tanks, blah, blah, blah. Imagine if they did that. That would actually initiate violence. That is an actual CNN analyst trying to start something. Imagine if I would said that about BLMers. Oh, man. But the thing is, Canadian truckers, easy target. There's no thumbs up emoji for them. You know, but then she backtracked and said she was just trying to talk about peaceful protests. No, she's an advocate for attacking a peaceful protest. CNN, again, wrong side of history, that, wrong side on everything. Isn't, it's amazing. Isn't that incitement? You know, go, yeah. go slash their tires. Yeah. You know, the amazing thing about this is that Canada isn't used to this. The Canadians don't protest on the level that we do in the United yeah. States. And to get these truckers who gave everything at a time when they didn't even know how dangerous COVID was, to make them into terrorists and insurrectionists is absolutely absurd. But what is so hypocritical, and I'm so tired of using that word, is for Biden to call up Trudeau and say, look, you better make sure you stop them. Trudeau didn't even want to talk to them. Mm -hmm. He might have been able to, send, to stop some of this. But right now, they're now starting a, a protest on foot in Jericho. They're calling it the Jericho protest. They're protesting around Parliament. And the truth is that 
they're going to continue because the world supports them. And when Trudeau was talking about foreign money, he's talking about money from the United States, money from all over the world. And any government that threatens to take money from people who give it for someone else is committing a, is committing a crime. It's a fraud. It's a, uh, it's a larceny. Uh, Geraldo, I think the only answer, we put a wall up on the northern border and we just end this, right? <laughs> Whoever would have thought that the southern border would be less chaotic than the northern border. I, I think uh, I heard a lot of uh, well-expressed uh, but bogus uh, analysis of what's happening. Bogus, yes. bogus analysis. analysis. Uh, bogus. The, I just got off the phone with my friend who lives in Toronto but does business in, uh, in Ottawa. Uh, he says that Canadians are, you know, they're nice people. They, they are. are and and they, they, they don't overreact. They are grotesquely annoyed or profoundly annoyed, I should say, that the government has taken this long to clean up the streets of the capital city. Uh, calling them truckers is very romanticizing them. They're more like Occupy Wall Street. Less than half of them are actually well, in the I mean, trucking Occupy business. Wall Street, they didn't there's, even have a job. What would you call them? There's a couple These people of, there, are truckers. There's a couple of thousand. Some are. Half of them are. The other half are... are who Occupy them. Wall Street. No, type. they support the truckers. These are hardworking people. These, these are, are the, the, these, these are disgruntled people. Listen, they have a whatever their beef is. I, I I I understand that. I have no problem with people acting out to resolve issues that they have. What I have a problem with is when you stop trade between two nations, you put people out of work, you cause enormous... Oh, only the enormous government can do that. Who put people they, out of work? They, they, the they, government they, put people Toyota out of work. and Ford are closing shifts now because they can't get parts no, because of the protest. but they voluntarily open the, one lane on their own. They the, don't want to stop the pathetic trade. Thing about this the, is, the, the pathetic thing about this is that it has been allowed to go on for over two weeks. Oh. In the, can you imagine in the capital city... Closing things down, annoying people to beat the ban. We, they should set fire. You know what, Geraldo? They should set fire to buildings. Yes. They did that all summer. I didn't hear you. What do you this think? Where do, they, where do you think they go to the bathroom? Just the, curious. Where do you think they go? Bathrooms. To the in those cans, truckers know how to do that. Cans lined up. Like, all right. David. By the way, I love how you, when it comes to lockdowns and masks, hey, don't stop. Just a little bit longer. Just a little. We're almost there. We're almost there. We truckers, are almost there. truckers show up and we you go, there. oh my God, they're shutting things down. That has to they're stop right down. now. Interstate That's hypocritical. International. You're talking out of two sides of your mouth. Of war. Right. For, I am not. Yes. Right. You wouldn't see two sides of my mouth with my All right. <laughs> to, to call closing some lanes on a bridge an act of war is the <laughs> height of idiocy. There's some shifts that have been shut down at plants. And by the way, there are other bridges that go from Canada into the United States and, and back. So this is not a massive hardship. It doesn't help the case of the truckers that if you're that if people are out of some hours on the job mm -hmm. at a Ford plant or another plant, so they might want to think about that. True. But the very way that these leaders and these gassy clatterbags on CNN have handled this and talked about this <laughs> exemplifies why the truckers are protesting and angry in the first place. From the leaders, from Trudeau on down, obey our edicts and decrees from on high, these would-be emperors and kings. They get treated as if they're plebes and proles over and over again, that, that it's beneath Trudeau to even sit down and talk to them. They don't deserve to be heard. They, just, they don't deserve a conversation, just vilification from these leaders in Canada and these individuals on CNN. One thing about that CNN thing, mm -hmm. she said, uh, take their gas, slash their tires, and then move the trucks. <laughs> Does that moron not know how <laughs> trucks actually operate? That if they don't yeah. have gas and their tires are flat, they're not moving anywhere. Can and, I, and yeah, just, one, just one more thing. Yeah. These are the people who moved food yeah. and necessities some, to all of some us. Some of them were. Yeah, a lot of them, of them were not. They, can I, can they, I, they, they were, oh, they, one, one thing. My friend in Ontario said oh. that they are generally regarded as... Is he a truck driver? Because if he's not, they are generally he regarded as ultra-right ruffians. Ah, okay. oh, there you go. Ultra I, would, right no, I, have to, right I want to agree, with, I want to agree with Geraldo. This bri blocking this bridge is wrong because how is Justin Trudeau going to get his shoe polished? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's, got to, he's got to put the black face he's on it. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and by I, the way... How he, has no, he can't call anybody things, racist. One of the things they're objecting to is the term... They want to terminate the digital tracking and the contract uh, contact tracing, which they're doing on your iPhone. You may want to look at it. You haven't agreed to it, but go through your uh, settings... You're, you're being traced. If you bought a loaf of bread or some or yes. some Advil for your aching back because you were sitting on your ass 
ass all day long every day for two years. Yes, you at CNN, you got it because of a trucker. Thank them rather than sneering. Okay, and I think we can all agree Geraldo's friend in Canada represents all of Canada. <laughs> Failing Biden can't take the heat. Joe snapping at a reporter. Boy, and we'll show gone. you next. It's crazy. What you gonna do? Yes, sir. I'm not going to argue with you. That's a good observation, yeah. You clearly care. Well, that's the son of a gun. Hands on top of your head. I appreciate you telling me that. Hear that? It's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify is a platform designed for anyone to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs like myself the resource once reserved for big business. Customized for my needs with a great-looking online store that brings my idea to life and tools to manage my day-to-day and drive sales. Shopify powers millions of entrepreneurs from first sale to full scale. And every 28 seconds, small business owners make their first sale on Shopify. Get started by building and customizing your online store with no coding or design experience. Access powerful tools to help you find customers, drive sales, and manage your day-to-day. Go to Shopify.com slash The Five, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to Shopify.com slash The Five. The Five, right now. Shopify.com slash The Five. I'm Guy Benson. Join me weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern as we break down the biggest stories of the day with some of the biggest newsmakers and guests. Listen live on the Fox News app or get the free podcast at GuyBensonShow.com. I cross my heart and promise to Another brutal week for Joe Biden, the president proving he is totally clueless and has no solutions to the problems Americans face. After crashing to a new low in the polls, Biden getting snippy and struggling to answer a reasonable question about record inflation. I think it was back in July you said inflation was going to be temporary. I think a lot of Americans are wondering what your definition of temporary is. Well, you're being a wise guy with me a little bit. Uh, I understand that's your job. According to Nobel laureates, 14 of them that contacted me and a number of corporate leaders, it's ought to be able to start to taper off as we go through this year. And Biden leading from behind after Democratic governors finally rolled back COVID mandates. It's hard to say whether they're wrong. Here's the science is saying now that masks work, masks make a difference, and there's a relation. I I committed that I would follow the science, the science as put forward by the CDC and the and the and the federal people. And uh, I think it's probably premature, but it's you know it's it's a tough call. Jesse, has he ever been able? Has Biden ever been able to lay out a plan? on how he's going to fight inflation, other than blaming everything else on inflation and saying, you know, don't ask me about what I said because I don't want to be responsible for what I said. But, Judge, Nobel laureates, 17 of yes, them. Yes, I write <laughs> Why that always down. 17? I don't know. Yeah. You know, you can't say Nobel laureates when you're the president. You just can't use that phrase. No one knows what it Nobody means. Nobody cares. And no one cares. People actually look down on Nobel laureates. They gave Obama the Peace Prize before he even came into office, I think. And then if you listen to the rest of his answer, he says, oh, you know what? Well, we're going to build an Intel chip manufacturer in Ohio. Well, I mean, that doesn't take weeks. That takes years. That's not going to do anything about gas or food. The guy doesn't have any big answers. News, big news I do mind. like the fact that he has a nickname for people. That's one wise thing I guy. like about it. I like wise guy, you know, lying dog face, pony soldier. <laughs> I want to know what he calls Kamala. That's what I want to know. And then he says, you know what? It's premature to pull back on the masks. 
He doesn't know what premature is. He wants to spend trillions to change the weather 100 years from now. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about what premature means. OK, so I'll give that one to you, Geraldo. Is it premature to pull back on the mask for children? Uh, when the American Academy of Pediatrics yeah. says uh, are they Nobel that laureates? <laughs> all, all the states reporting 0.01 percent of all child COVID resulted in death. Let me say that although I like him as a person, he is not nimble as a president. Is he smart? Uh, I don't know if he's smart or not. He, I think that he must be, uh, but he's having, a, he's having a failure to communicate. <laughs> why, is it, why do you think he's smart? Well, he has had a... I don't want to go into his I'm whole asking, biography and all the rest of it. Is he, he smart he today? He was vice president of the United States. Hey, is he he's, smart today? He's, he's not as... When I say he's not nimble, what I mean is he has lost a step in terms of his response. Like I know sitting, that. Sitting at this table, he would have a hard time with you, Piranha. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, do, I do think that the governors, the Democratic governors, are picking up the slack and may save, may save the party from an absolute rout. But I don't know if we're going to talk about... Crimea, uh, not Crimea, about Ukraine. Uh, but we, we could all be in, engaged in C a block. war in Europe. Or the C C block. Block. Okay. That, that's a C well, we'll have block. to put that. That'll be the, the cliffhanger. Is he smart? Uh, I, I that believe question? that he, I, I think that it is an irrelevant it's question, yes and no I don't question. know the answer. I okay, don't know. that's because he doesn't want to answer it. Is he smart? Uh, I think he might have been at some point in his life. Today. No. Uh, it's kind of sad. Uh, and also, he's not, ta he's not telling the truth. That's probably the... 14, do you actually believe 14 Nobel laureates? Do you think they... 17. And, 17, sorry, 17. Because, oh, yeah, it was 14 national security, uh, whatever. But 17, <laughs> so 17... They, they, contact, they, contacted they contacted him. him. That, is, that is easily yeah. checkable. Yeah. I know I'd like to speak to the president, yeah. please. Yes, I'm a, uh, who am I? I'm a okay. Nobel laureate. Here's, here's <laughs> sorry. My, yeah. 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 Here's my theory. You a robocall. Can't, you can't... Uh, be concerned over wokeism and virtue signaling and crime, inflation, and COVID. The hard left radical postures, that's been taking up his limited shelf space in his brain, right? All that stuff that put it pushed out, all of the stuff that he's supposed to care about. He's supposed to care about the real concerns of the American people, which to me right now obviously is crime and inflation. But he can't do it because there's an opportunity cost to the obsession with identity. And ironically, it's affecting the identities that the left claim to defend, right? It's, uh, it's minorities that are getting hit hardest with inflation. It's a systemic racist point, you know, to, to inflation. So, I mean, it, this is, we're watching the consequences of a man who's essentially a, hol a husk. Okay. And, and they filled it up with wokeism. And it's, he's just like a, he's like a dead robot. Okay. A dead robot. Right. A dead robot. Is that you know what? That's redundant. Dagan, what, Dagan, what we have now is we've got people like uh, Senator Mark Warner saying, let's get rid of the gas tax, and that'll save Americans money. And now we also have Obama calling in to some of these Democrat oh. uh, political calls. What, what do you make of this? Uh, that that's gasping for desperation because they can't lean on Joe Biden, who's in cognitive decline. I don't understand. It's worse by the day and by the month. Mm -hmm. And he sat down with Lester Holt at a time. Geraldo raised it. We're going to talk about it in the next block. But it rushes on that verge of invading Ukraine. Why wouldn't he sit down? And I know President Trump did not do live interviews on the, before the Super Bowl. But he, Joe Biden hadn't done a sit-down interview so far this year. This was his first. He did a taped interview days before it was going to air. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't he try to reassure the American people and sit down and at least do same-day taping? Or even if you believe that you were capable of doing an interview with Lester Holt, do it live on the day of the Super Bowl. What else has he got going on? He's got a Manny Petty pregame. <laughs> well, no, he's so got a Camp David. I want to say one thing about I, I know, but Manny you get Petty's. you can get Manny Petty's at, at Camp everything. David. So yeah, they no. so they tell me, Jesse. Yeah. Um, I, I want to say really quickly one thing about inflation. Inflation, yes, is, is at a forty-year high, but right now it is much worse than 1982. Back then, a risk-averse, responsible, conservative saver could put their money in a CD or a bank account and earn 8 to 10% on it. Right now, when you have your money in the bank, you are losing 7% every year. This Federal Reserve and this man in the White House running fiscal policy is they are promoting gambling. The only way that you can keep up with inflation with your money is by taking on 
downside risk of 20, 30, 40, yeah. or 50 percent. All right. That is a horrific place to put hardworking Americans. All right. Coming up, the world bracing for a Russian invasion of Ukraine. But don't worry, Kamala Harris is on the job. From the Fox News Podcasts Network. In these ever changing times, you can rely on Fox News for hourly updates for the very latest news and information on your time. Listen and download now at FoxNewsPodcast.com or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Hey, it's Will Kane, co host of Fox and Friends Weekend. Join me as I share my thoughts on a wide range of topics from sports and pop culture to politics and business. The Will Kane Podcast. Subscribe and listen now at FoxNewsPodcasts.com. The Biden administration urgently warning this afternoon about the imminent outbreak of war in Europe. President Biden will be speaking to Putin tomorrow. The White House saying forcefully that, quote, we are in the window of a possible Russian invasion of Ukraine, which, quote, could begin during the Olympics. That is before or after February the 20th. That's next Friday. President Biden warning Americans to get out of Ukraine while they still can. Uh, what scenarios would you put American troops to rescue and get Americans out? They're not. That's a world war when Americans and Russia start shooting at one another. I'm hoping that if, in fact, he's foolish enough to go in, he's smart enough not to, in fact, do anything that would negatively impact on American citizens. American citizens should leave, should leave now. We're dealing with one of the largest armies in the world. This is a very different situation, and things could go crazy quickly. All right. With the threat of war, very real. I got my dates mixed up there. February 20th is next Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, With the threat of war, very real in Europe, the president turning to a national security rookie, with all due respect, Vice President Kamala Harris, not a lot of experience on the international scene, to try to resolve this urgent crisis, despite her failures so far with issues like our southern border. The vice president will be headed to Germany next week to rally allies against Russia. Uh, this is for real, uh, Judge, and I, I, I don't know why they're so, the, so the, the warnings are so urgent, but they seem to have, have real edge. They seem to really sound to me like they are very forceful and, and imminent is the word that comes to my mind. Well, what's interesting about this is and disappointing is that he doesn't imagine a scenario where he's going to go in and protect Americans if we're in a situation Oof. where Russia invades. I, I mean, agree with he, that. he did it. He did it in Afghanistan, although he lied initially. He said, we're going to we're going to protect the Americans. We'll we'll take care of them. We'll get them out. And, and then he said, no, we're not going to get them out. Now he's saying ahead of time, we're not going to get Americans out. That is disgusting. That alone should be enough. You want to talk impeachment? That should be impeachment. But the issue of the Ukraine is very interesting because I spoke to someone today and he said to me, look, he said the Russians have about 120,000 troops uh, on the borders. They've got about 100,000 in Belarus doing training. He says, but the Russian economy is so bad that the thought of them actually invading and actually staying there doesn't make sense because they can't afford to keep the troops there. Plus, since they already have access to the water in the eastern Ukraine, that they're already there there. They really don't have to go in there. If they go into Kiev, the Ukrainians are tough fighters and they're going to give them uh, a real run for their money. So I'm not so sure it's imminent. The, but the problem, the, the reason it could be imminent, Jesse, is that just think of all those tanks parked there running the engines the whole time. Think about uh, the so- soldiers have to eat. Uh, you, they got to heat. They get, they get sick. I mean, to maintain a force of that size in the field is enormously expensive. He can't keep them there forever. It's, it's use them or lose them. But it's even more expensive once they go in with right. the supply lines and all the fuel and everything like that. And so, Ukrainians shooting you know, at them I used to think he wasn't going in, and now I think he might and just take half of the country and not even try for Kiev. But what do I know? I have no idea what he's going to do. But if he does go in, he's going to bleed to death in that country. My God, I don't think that's going to go very well for Putin. I just imagine what would happen if Trump were president right now and how the media oh. would be covering this. 
Trump has allowed Vlad to gobble up Ukraine in exchange for his help for beating Hillary Clinton in the election. <laughs> Donald Trump vacationing in, in a you know, three-day weekend at Camp David while Americans are left stranded there as NATO crumbles while Trump golfs. You know, and he sends Mike Pence so he doesn't have to go there. I mean, come on, Geraldo. Oh, what this about is, Kamala? What about Kamala? Kamala, yeah, listen, about her? I would have said Hunter. Hunter knows everything about Ukraine. <laughs> but you can look at it this way. She's been begging for a better role. You know what? Hey, this is the big leagues, babe. This is high-stakes diplomacy. You wanted something big? You wanted to go to Europe? Go for it. Let's see how it shakes out. other hand, you're basically giving her a really tough thing, and she could come back with Russia already invaded Ukraine and Germany saying, you know what, we're not going to close Nord Stream 2, and that could look even worse. You can't go in, Judge. I, I wanted to mention before I went to Jesse that they can't rescue Americans in Ukraine when the Russians are occupied. You can't put American forces and Russian forces in the same yeah, neighborhood. Yeah, because they'll start fighting, It would be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be a, a war. European war. It would be war. But, uh, but uh, Dagan, one of the, the positive things that uh, the president has accomplished is uh, Putin is now facing a united NATO, more or less. The NATO was shattered, remember. The United States was uh, half-assed participating. Uh, th there were countries that uh, didn't know whether joining NATO was a good idea after all. Uh, you know, the one thing that uh, Putin has managed is to unite NATO again. We'll well, we'll see. Where are the sanctions then? Why aren't we being um, proactive rather than reactive? Ooh, if you go in, we're going to lay sanctions on. So you would There's do it so right now? We should have done it weeks ago. Mm. We should have taken, ta you know, the United Kingdom can start cracking down on the personal assets of Putin and his cronies because most of them or a lot of them are uh, housed in London or in England, number one. There's so much that we could have done. Why Nord Stream 2? Why wait for that? That uh, Number one. Number two, I, I said this a year ago or over a year ago on this very show, by Biden dismantling our energy economy and destroying our strength on the world stage where we were the swing producer. We controlled uh, world prices. We had the most excess production capacity. We were the number one energy producer in the world. Biden destroyed that and handed power control and wealth to Russia and Iran, nations that want to wipe us off the planet. You saw today oil's at $94 a barrel. Then he turns around and starts begging OPEC to pump more oil in August. So not only did we enrich Russia, Russia's in a much better economic place now because oil's at a seven-year, eight-year high, but we also emboldened Putin because weakness is the oxygen of tyrants. What about on the political front, Greg, if Biden were to announce, to Degan's point, we are, I made a mistake. He doesn't even have, he doesn't even have to apologize. I'm, I'm reopening on an emergency, national emergency basis, uh, the, uh, the Keystone Pipeline, the XL Pipeline, every other damn pipeline they shut down, every refinery well, that, that they more for. That wasn't built yet. They should open up all land leases. They should just say pump to the sky. What? what? Would sure. that help? Would that save him and us? Well, uh, maybe, but I don't think I, I don't know if that's the issue right now. I'm happy that Kamala is going to the Ukraine to explore the root causes of the <laughs> Russian border problem. Uh, she's probably going to get the history, come back and report, do a nice little book report. I also love the fact that Biden has brought us firmly back into the 1970s. We got the 1970s crime rates. We got the 1970s gas prices. Now it looks like we're going to have a 1970s proxy war with an evil empire. <laughs> I was looking for, if he continues that, he's going to resurrect the Manson family. And that's going to be really interesting. Where's Jim Jones? He's going to bring back everything bad about it. But you first... My you platform gotta, shoes. Yes. Geraldo's here. Oh, yeah. First, you've got to ask, though, how, the, how does this intel on the Ukraine compare to the intel in Afghanistan, right? We should ask ourselves that. And we brought up NATO. If Putin doesn't want the Ukraine in NATO, why do we care? This is, this is uh, confusing me. Reverse history and consider an independent Texas joining the Warsaw Pact. All right? We could say, like, oh, we, NATO this, NATO that. It's really important. It really isn't that important. What do we get out of this? We get nothing out of this. Then put it in human terms. Yes, uh, Russia, Putin is a bully. And the Ukraine are the bullied, and America is always on the side of the bullied, which means we should help the Ukraine. We do should what? Help. What should we do? Oh, well, if we go have to supply arms, we have to. My feeling is, is that that's not going to happen. So you wouldn't put the 82nd Airborne in? Hell no. Yeah.
Good. Hell no. What, what good, good is that for us? We what good is that for us? Yeah. Well, amen. And that we agree. Uh, I just got a note quickly from is Canada. Is this from Ontario? Yes. From Ontario. Yes. Uh, the Teamsters, the Teamsters are saying to the protesters, go home. Go home. We join in the oh, calls urging please. the protesters so, with oh, legitimate you know concerns to go Canada, back to their own you know theaters. I could, I could the fastest the is thing up next. From someone else. Suddenly I turned around and she was standing there With silver bracelets on her wrists and flowers in her hair She walked up to me so gracefully and took my crown of thorns Come in, she said, I'll give you shelter from the sun It, Welcome back. Time for the <laughs> fastest. The judge was criticizing my music so I, I didn't know it was your what are What are we getting ready for the big Super Bowl showdown this Sunday? 100 million Americans will be watching as the Bengals face off against the Rams. But what can be more important than the game? The food. We've assembled a killer spread thanks to Morgan's Brooklyn Barbecue. Greg has devoured a good chunk of it. So I'm on my fourth rib, and that was just during the break. Well, hand me the rubber gloves. I just have to show you. Greg <laughs> uh, apparently carries around in your briefcase yes. a collection of rubber gloves in case he has to eat No, ribs. no, no, no. There's wet wipes inside the rubber glove. Okay. Rob Cartier. That's for barbecue and in case I go to prison. If I was wearing a hat, I'd tip it to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Jesse, what are you doing for the game? I'll just watch it at home. Uh, I don't really care who wins. No one cares who wins. This is like, <laughs> the, like the least anticipated Super Bowl that I can remember. There's no real stars at quarterback. There are two young quarterbacks. No one that doesn't follow Thank football you. knows anything about the Super Bowl. But, you know, hopefully since he comes from behind and wins at the end. Geraldo, what are you doing? Having two uh, parties. <laughs> having a party Saturday and a party Sunday, I've been informed. Sunday is a very eclectic group. Uh, both uh, catering uh, from Doug Katz and also some some finger food like this. And uh, thanks for the with, invite, by the way. The <laughs> You're always invited, Greg, despite your surly attitude. <laughs> <laughs> you better order a lot more. I'm not food. invited to any party because <laughs> I don't go. Yeah, you, they don't. You don't get the invite because you won't show up. That's, yeah, well, that's the problem. <laughs> Judge, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. But I'll have the game on because I want to. I want to see the commercials. Oh God. And, you Why? people, I can't watch games like that. That's women. Why? Because you guys are loud during oh, the game, sexy. and then during the commercials, you're like, shh, everybody that's be quiet. That's so funny. Yeah, well, I'm with my dogs. Nobody cares. <laughs> okay? It's just me and the dogs. The dogs I like so commercials. Pretty. I want to see the halftime show. Who's performing? Um, Eminem. Uh, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem. Uh, Eminem. Yeah, you like those songs? I do. Kendrick yeah. Lamar, who doesn't well, name, like me. Name a Dr. Dre song. I can name an Eminem song. <laughs> Which one? Monster right. Under My Bed or something. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see you rocking the Eminem. Yeah. Hey, but, oh, wait, before you take a bite of that brisket, dear Greg, yeah. uh, what are you doing this weekend? I'm watching thing. all of the Tyrus and Tim podcasts because, I'm, because they, they claim that they trash me in every single one. And I've never really listened to them. So that, instead of watching the Super Bowl, I'm going to do that. Why you're are not, you you're so not hungry? watching the Super what? Bowl? Why are you so hungry? Um, this is my dinner. And you, are, you always see it in front of millions yeah. of people. I don't care. I mean, this is, the, it's this is what I do. But right. I get free food from Morgan's. I'm eating it. Because you know what? I got to leave. And then I'll, where does this food go? Just right. your, put it in your baggie. And then, I, no, this is my rubber glove. Right. You're Which supposed step? to, if there's food you on have, the set, you're supposed to eat. Yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, so I'll have a, this is a deep right. fried Oreo. Here yes. we go. That sounds oh, disgusting. Um, wait, who do you got? Let me see. You're not, you don't care. I don't even know who's playing. Bengals, Bengals, who has the Bengals? Bengals. I, you know, I love Hammer. We love Hammer. We love Hammer. Yeah. It's all about that's the Bengals. Right. And, you know, in Cleveland, to beef with Cincinnati, you got to really be very on the down low about it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Is okay. you on the down low? Don't go anywhere. Yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> Fan Mail Friday's up next. Yeah, it's great. I don't feel well, but it's because <laughs> I just eat too fast. I eat too fast. I understand. That's why you're always burping. I know. <gasps> Fan Mail Friday. First one. Uh, what is your most memorable athletic feat? Ooh. Mm. All right, Geraldo. Let's get yours out of the way. <laughs> uh, I used to box yeah. for, uh, for charity for my... Uh, 
uh, developmentally disabled charity, not the charity is them, to, mm -hmm. to benefit and uh, fight, fight the Wall Street uh, mm -hmm. champion that they put up, whoever bid the most, to fight me. And I was, I was a bad boxer. They were much better boxers, but I had staying power, and I won the big match at Madison Square Garden. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Judge. You, uh, this is embarrassing, but it is my most memorable feat. The first time I went to Soul Cycle, which was like, I don't know, eight years ago, whenever, nine years ago. So I go into a dark room. My girlfriend says, you got to come, you got to come. So I get on the bicycle. I'd never been to Soul Cycle in my life. Didn't know what it was like. Thought everybody was nuts. They were in the dark. And they kept going like this, right? Mm -hmm. Like you bend your elbows and you do. Yeah. So I'm looking at everybody. I go like this. I chip my front tooth <laughs> on the bar of the bicycle. And I. <laughs> you should have sued. That's what I did. Is that the one you spit out on my show? No, it's probably the same tooth. I just sued that dentist. You spit out a tooth on your show? Oh, yeah, I was fighting with I caught someone. the tooth. He was, just, he caught the... <laughs> we have to get tape of that. Oh, yeah, it's, oh, I, have it. I have the Producers. Tape. We okay. should. That's one more thing. All Montana. Right. Dagan. Do that. Uh, I used to mountain bike. I was not good at anything athletic, any physical activity. Well, never mind. Um, and <laughs> uh, I would... And I would I went. I learned a mountain bike when I was living in Colorado, and I used to mountain bike in Moab, Utah, and I could whoop some man butt. Yeah, I was proud of that. Yeah. What about you? Fifth grade mm. in the gym. Yeah. Basketball. Very good. Tie game. Ten seconds left. I steal the ball. Go down the court. Winning layup at the buzzer, and my grandmother was watching. Oh, fantastic. Wow. And you had one with your daughter, too. Your Highlight daughter. of my athletic career right there. Aww. Fifth grade, I peaked, I think. That's I think so your awesome. daughter dunked I it. landed a free throw in third grade basketball. It was the only time I ever scored in my life. <laughs> kind of sad when you think about I'm it. I'm the only but, one with one a more? physical experience. <laughs> what is your favorite errand on your day off? Oh, God. Dagan? Buying Red Bull and a big bag of um, kettle corn. <laughs> CVS. Oh. Jesse? In the morning. That's amazing. I'll do the flower shop. Mm -mm. Oh, please. Oh, what a brown. What a, I, oh, like God. I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I like now that. you're going to make me throw up. That's nice. This food's fantastic. Geraldo. Just walking around with the dogs. Mm. I like uh, I like me and the dogs communicate. We That's go down to the creek. Not an errand, Geraldo. Yeah. No, it's not quite an errand. Yes. But it is a bit. You don't take your Bentley in for a little tune-up? I do that, too. I, I take it to the car wash, and that <laughs> is a uh, thank you. That yeah. is an errand the that I do. The best errand ever is washing your car by hand, Judge. You know, sometimes I'll put on some. I do that. Yeah, yeah. I put on some I cutoffs. Do. I'll, I'll do a shirtless. I do. No. And I'll just do this. No. Yeah. Oh, you should okay. stop by my place. You don't live that far. I'll be. I don't live I'll that love far to wash your car. Yeah. Yeah. Shirtless. You would? Shirtless. Shirtless. Yeah. Come for free. Yeah, wax All off. Of wax okay. off. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do I like to do? Uh, okay. Like, if I need something simple, right? Like maybe gloves or maybe something simple, I'll go and spend. A lot of time at a department store. Oh, shopping? Yes. Uh, that's, that's, what what it's shopping. that's what it's called. That's what it's called. I shop at the liquor store. Yeah. I always like to find a new expensive wine and then sit all Saturday. You don't like it. expensive wine. You drink $30 a bottle wine. Oh, look at that. So uh, according to Mr. Moneybags, uh, $30 a bottle of wine is cheap. <laughs> It uh, can be who really is who is great. an elitist who's out of touch? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Jesse Waters, Mr. Right. Thirty Dollars. Well, I, that's okay. how much I spend on a glass. You okay. are disgusting. Greg, <laughs> yesterday you were shopping for cars on your phone. <laughs> yeah, collectible cars, I might add. Well, good. Yeah. yeah. So stop with like the low class okay, BS. The populism. We yeah. have to. We go. can go now. You're not a man of the people. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing is up next. I'm off keto. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're right back on. I'll go first. <laughs> I want to wish my dad a very speedy recovery. Just got knee oh. surgery. He's doing great. Already in physical therapy. Way to go, Stephen Waters. Um, also, Super Bowl weekend, as you guys know, it's crazy. And this is a crazy fan from Cincinnati. Look what he's done that to is his head, his face, oh my gosh. his beard, his skull. What is wrong? And I don't know what he's got going on in the rest of his body, and I don't want to know. But that's how much the Cincinnati Bengal fan base cares about this game. Is that a real person? Have they ever won the Super Bowl? I don't think so. I think the guy is probably going to be... Wow. 
dead if they win this game. That's makeup. That's not tattoos. Kill his wife. Those aren't tats. I don't know what that is. I don't. But it looks like animals are great coming out of his chin. (laughs) Greg. Yes. uh, In prime time tonight, we got a hot show. Be really very hot. My my show is hot. Sizzling. I have uh, Jonathan Joey Jones, Liz McDonald. I got Cat and Tyra. It's going to be great. All right, there you go. Let's do this, huh? Greg Sports Corner. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, as you know, I'm quite the basketball player, but I just wish One free someone would look at me the way this dog looks at the ball. <laughs> I've been there for uh, going on almost four days <laughs> waiting for the ball to drop. That's hilarious. Yeah, the owner. Uh, He's waiting. His name's Mello. They call him Mello, and he's ruined a lot of basketball. So uh, he's just waiting for that one to fall. Uh, Isn't that nice? Don't you put Okay. Okay. Uh, Oh, I think it's me. That's Geraldo. Go ahead. All right. Slow down, Judge. (laughs) (laughs) Easy there, Judge. Uh, Quickly, uh, you know, go out every night in New York. You have to to go eating and stuff. So went to Fresco by Scotto, one of the great restaurants in uh, New York. Uh, Rosanna Scotto, uh, the daughter of the founders, uh, uh, is the host of Good Day in New York. That's my pal John Johnson, his wife Anne. Uh, that, uh, that's Mrs. Scotto in the middle there, her grandson. Uh, and uh, with Chris Christie was there. Uh, I did a, hit, a live shot, too, uh, with uh, the great uh, Bill Ritter, the anchor of uh, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Uh, we did it. It's the 50th anniversary today of the actual Willowbrook documentary. And uh, for WABC. Okay. Your life. All right, it's my turn. All right. Today, you may not know it, is National Peppermint Patty Day. And for those of you who know it or don't know it, I am a a peppermint patty freak. I always feel that cool breeze blowing through (laughs) my hair. And Uncle Giuseppe's makes these wonderful peppermint patty apples, a cold green apple surrounded by peppermint patty underneath. Uncle Giuseppe's, it's called the Janine Apple. Yeah, zero calories. Zero, but so delicious. Did we not have time? You, I got some sneezing seals. Oh, oh. I got. You know what? We're going to do the sneezing seals next time. Have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy the Super Bowl. We'll see you on Monday. I'm Guy Benson. Join me weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern as we break down the biggest stories of the day with some of the biggest newsmakers and guests. Listen live on the Fox News app or get the free podcast at GuyBensonShow.com.